Good morning and welcome to worship. Hey kids, let's show the grown-ups our Mavatma, our memory verse of the month. Are you ready? In three, two, one. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight. Deuteronomy 6.18. Mavatma. And now that we've been reminded of what is good and true from the Bible, let's worship God together. We're glad you're with us today. Let's stand as we worship this morning. Oh, worship the King, our glorious, wonderful King. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully see His wonderful love. Our shield. to this beautiful Sunday morning. I am Martin. I am the student pastor here at Mayfield Road Baptist Church. And I just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. If this is your first time joining us or if you have a prayer request, I would love to direct you to our connect card. And if you, um, excuse me, I want, we want to be able to connect with each and every one of you and pray for you. Now that connect card, you can find that at mayfieldroad.org slash connect. Um, and a link of that will be posted in our Facebook uh, comments for those who are watching online. And those who are here in person, we have some in the PREC or is a QR code that you can scan with your phone that'll take you straight to that link. I also wanna say thank you for your continued financial support. And just wanna remind you of the three ways you can do it is by your bank's bill pay, by dropping it off in person, or, uh, ooh, yeah, dropping it off in person in the church office, or as you leave, they, we have some baskets at the doors um, as you exit uh, the service today. Once again, I just want to say thank you for joining us, and let's continue to worship our God, our King, our Savior this morning. It's almost like Martin missed an hour of sleep or something. <laughs> <laughs> let's stand. Let's stand. We worship a living and holy God this morning. He is our living hope.
seated. You know, faithfulness is one of those words that, that we hear at church and that we sing or we read about. And uh, sometimes for me, I, words that get real familiar, sometimes I need to go back and, and think through, what, what is it actually talking about? So when we say God is faithful, that means that God has a long, long, long track record Amen. of doing what's right and good. Sometimes in ways that surprise us. Sometimes in, in ways that we didn't really expect. But over and over and over again, he's been proven to be exactly who he says he is. A good and loving father who is long in suffering, long in his faithfulness, who is slow to anger and abounding in love, who's long suffering and caring for his people and walking with us and shepherding us and guiding us in his way. And who's quick to forgive and to redeem and to rescue those who are far from him. He's also proven his wisdom time and time again. When the things in our world that we can't make head or tails out of, he's able to answer. He's able to deal with in the way that's right. And so we pray thanking him for his faithfulness that we've seen, but also confident of his faithfulness in ways we have not seen for the challenges that we see in front of us right now. And so that's the posture we come to when we pray, is thankful for his faithfulness in the past and looking forward to his faithfulness that we see unfold in the future. And as we look around at our world, that's a good thing to remember, right? Let's pray together this morning. Father, I thank you that you are a good and faithful God. There's never been a time or way that you've not been proven faithful. You always have been. You always are. And so, God, we thank you for that. We're grateful for that. That strengthens our faith. But, God, it also gives us confidence as we look around at our world in the challenges and the heartache, the difficulty, God, the problems and the brokenness that we see in our world. And sometimes we don't even know how to sort it out. We just know it needs to be fixed. But God, we go to your word and we're reminded that you've promised one day you will make all things right. One day you will wipe the last tear from our eyes. One day death will be no more. God, one day everything and everyone that opposes you will be put down and all of creation will be made new and we'll be with you. And God, we are looking forward to that day, but right now in this one, show us how to live thankful for your faithfulness in the past and looking forward to your faithfulness being revealed in the future. We're grateful that that's who you are. And show us how to live in response and to live in refuge that you provide. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to the words of this song. Yeah, not, not I, but through Christ in me.
Father, I thank you for your faithfulness, for your love, and for for sending Jesus that because of your faithfulness in sending Christ, we can be made right with you. And because of your kindness in working by your Spirit in us and through us, we can be a part of what you're doing in our world. We're quick to acknowledge it's not what we bring to the table, it's what you have given to us to steward. And so we pray that you continue to show us how to cooperate with you and be a part of what you're doing in our world. And so sharpen us. 
and shape us to be your people. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as many of you may know, my boys and I, we love the outdoors. And so a few weeks ago, my oldest son, Mitchell, and I were out on a hike. And as we were out there, he found what appeared to be a wild onion. And after I looked at it, examined it closer, I was able to determine that's exactly what it was. And so I, you know, divided it and we got to eat it and go on and, you know, had a good time. But I told him that you never, never eat anything in the wild that I don't examine and give the okay first. Because there's plants and stuff out there that, that looks safe, but isn't. There's some stuff out there that looks okay, but could actually make you really sick. And uh, so that's why the Texas Parks and Wildlife Service has these guidebooks and, you know, website and stuff like that to help you know what you're looking for and uh, help you make uh, wise decisions and not be fooled. Because some things that look safe are not. And that's not just true of plants, is it? That's true in a whole lot of areas of our life. And that's especially true when it comes to pastors and spiritual leaders and influencers. Because there's some voices out there that are not safe, that are dangerous. Now we live in a time where we have more access to content and teaching from Uh, pastors and thought leaders and speakers than have ever before in human history. And I think that's a good thing. I love that. Uh, I love that any given week I can go and find videos and podcasts from Bible scholars like N.T. Wright or Sandra Richter or Scott McKnight or Lynn Kowick. Uh, That's awesome. I love that. I love that any given day I can pull up a sermon from Tim Keller or Derwin Gray, or Mike Bro, or Rick Warren. I mean, that's encouraging to me, and that helps me grow in my faith to have access to voices like that. Now, to be clear, I disagree with every single one of them on some point, but it's encouraging for me to have you know, those resources available, and I think it's good for all of us to learn from different pastors and leaders and teachers and other examples. You know, we don't have to agree with them on every point to be able to appreciate what they teach and what they offer. But we also need to be aware that some are not what they appear to be. And we need to be careful so that we're not fooled into following leaders who look safe but are not. And so in the passage we're going to look at today, Jesus gives a warning about who we follow and who we listen to. A warning about dangerous leaders, and it's one that we need to hear. So if you have your Bibles closed, let me ask you to go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 7. Boys and girls, if you're following in your one big story Bible, that's going to be on page 942. And here Jesus is wrapping up the Sermon on the Mount, and he's been describing the kind of people we're to become as his followers. And as he starts to draw it to a close here, he, he tells the people to make a choice. He calls them to choose if they're going to follow him on the way that leads to life or if they're going to turn and go down the way that leads to destruction. And then here in this passage, he warns them about who they listen to as they go. And so we pick up today in verse 15. And this is what Jesus says. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. So Jesus warns them about false prophets here. 
And that's anybody who claims to speak for God, but doesn't. And of course, that starts with the people who were opposing Jesus. There were some of the religious leaders back in that day who were actively out there trying to turn people away from Jesus. They were opposing him and saying, no, 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 don't listen to this guy. You know, he's leading you in the wrong way. And so they were actively trying to steer people away from Jesus. Those were certainly false prophets, but that's not the only ones. Uh, there were other false prophets, other people that kind of fell into this category that later on would actually act like followers of Jesus, or they would pretend like they were following Jesus in order to kind of get in with the crowd and then would wreak havoc on God's people. And we see them mentioned in the book of Acts and in some of Paul's letters. They could, you know, pretend like they're followers of Christ and then they would get in and manipulate the people and steer them in dangerous directions. So we see examples of them throughout Scripture. But this warning that Jesus gives isn't just for back in their day. Because even now in our day, there are dangerous leaders around. It's a warning for us too. And so we need to be careful. This passage here, this is a warning to be careful who you listen to. Because just because somebody is called pastor doesn't mean they should be trusted. Just because somebody claims to be a Bible expert doesn't mean they know what they're talking about. Just because somebody seems spiritual and safe doesn't mean that they are. Because there are people out there who know how to play the game. There are people out there who know how to say the right thing and act the right way in order to build trust and admiration then they can exploit it and leverage it for their own financial gain or for power and influence or to prey upon the people under their care. That happens. And it's not just done by those guys with the weird hair and the wacky beliefs. You know who I'm talking about. Truthfully, it can include pastors and leaders that we would agree with an awful lot of what they say. And even though their words may be right, their actions are not. And there have been enough examples of pastoral abuse and scandal to teach us that people that we follow can be predators in disguise. Just because a leader seems safe doesn't mean they are. Just because we like what they say doesn't mean they should be trusted. There are plenty of folks that we see that we would agree with them, that we would appreciate their theology, that we really like hearing what they say, and they are dangerous. So be careful who you listen to. How do we know who's trustworthy? Because let's be honest, all pastors and leaders you know, make mistakes. Uh, sometimes we make bad decisions. Sometimes pastors are known for our mouth going before our brain engages. And that's not just because we're not getting enough coffee. Sometimes we just talk too much. Sometimes, um, you know, we just say and do things wrong. And we need to be corrected. And when that, ha when that happens, we should be corrected. And we should receive that graciously. Because that's how a good functioning body works. That's how a family works things. Sometimes we all just make mistakes and need to be corrected and receive it in a gracious way. That's just healthy. But pastors and deacons and Bible teachers and leaders of all kinds will disappoint us. We understand that. I heard somebody say several years ago that, that good leadership is disappointing people at a rate they can stand. That's the goal that's on my mirror. Disappoint people at a rate they can stand, right? But we get that. We understand that. So how do you tell the difference between, you know, people who make mistakes, people who are, are good but just ordinary, versus those who are dangerous? 
Jesus says, you know them by their fruit. Look at their fruit, and that'll tell you a lot. So you don't have to know much about farming to know that a fruit is a pretty good indication of what kind of tree it is. If it's a tree with apples on it, it's a pretty good guess that's an apple tree. Generally speaking, that's how it works. And uh, Jesus is saying, look at the fruit of the lives. Look at you know, these leaders, look at what they're producing. That'll give you a pretty good indicator of whether they're worth listening to or not. Now, we tend to hear this passage when he's talking about fruit. We tend to look at outward success, right? Man, they're, they're fruitful. Look at how much fruit they produce. That's a fruitful ministry. Everything they, they touch seems to be up and to the right. They're just doing so much good for the world. But actually, success is not what Jesus has in mind here. Look in verse 21. Uh, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, drive out demons. And in your name, perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. See, Jesus says these false prophets, these dangerous leaders, they point to outward success. They point to things that they've done. They point to impressive stuff you know, is on their resume. Jesus says, that's not proof of anything. Outward success is not sufficient proof that a pastor or leader is trustworthy. And we've seen examples from this just even in the past few years. Guys like Bill Hybels, and James McDonald, and Ravi Zacharias, guys who've led successful ministries that I've appreciated and learned from have been proven not to be trustworthy. Now, I don't say names lightly. These are well documented and they prove a point to us that folks that we like and appreciate, success is not proof that they're trustworthy. And so we need to be careful who we listen to and don't be blinded by success because it's not a sufficient proof that a leader is worth following. One of the most downloaded podcasts ever came out this past year. It's called The Rise and Fall of March, Mars Hill. Some of you have heard of, heard of that or followed it. It's the story of Mars Hill Church in Seattle and how over the course of 15 years, it grew to 10,000 people. It was one of the most influential churches in the whole country. And the podcast follows the story of how the church ultimately collapsed and dissolved when stories came out about how the pastor had a long track record of, of abusive behavior towards staff and to members. The podcast just follows their stories and walks you through kind of what the people endured and the scars that were left. And it's hard to listen to. Because, I mean, that, some of those scars are going to be with people for the rest of their lives. And for some of you, you understand that. Some in our church family have been impacted by church hurt in that way. And it's just a picture that, again... Success is not proof that a pastor or leader is worth following. Uh, at the same time, I need to point out, I've been in churches sometimes where um, things are not going so well, and they were suspicious of any church that wasn't struggling like they were, and success was almost like, or lack of success was proof that you were doing it right. Like, Hey, everything's falling apart here. That's proof that we're getting it right. We're the only ones. That's not what Jesus is saying either. The point is success is really not a good indicator of whether or not a pastor or leader is trustworthy. 
That's not the fruit Jesus is talking about here in this passage. Instead, he's talking about a leader's character, about the qualities and traits of the person and how they live and how they work and how they treat others. He's saying if you want to know if a, if a leader is worth following or not, if he's worth listening to or not, examine their character. Look at how they live. Look at how they speak. Look at how they treat other people. That's the character. That's the fruit that Jesus is talking about here in this passage. Remember later in Galatians 5 where Paul writes about the fruit of the Spirit. What's he say it is? It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's, that's the fruit that's born when we love God with everything in us and when we love our neighbor as ourselves. That's the evidence of God's activity at work in someone's life. When we're producing those kinds of qualities when that's what spills out of us in the way that we live. And so that's what we need to look for in the pastors and spiritual leaders and mentors and the examples that we follow. These kinds of traits, that's what we're looking for. Not perfection, but consistent character. That's what we need to look for. And can I just point out this church has been greatly blessed because for nearly 20 years you had a pastor with that quality in Bobby Bridges. And you got to see that over the long haul. And that's the kind of pastor that I'm striving to be. And that's the kind of leader at every level of our church. We have men and women that have that kind of character that's been proven out at every level of leadership in our church here. And that's a gift, and that is something we should appreciate. At the same time, it's helpful and valuable and good for us to learn from leaders like that out in our world. There are leaders like that, who pastors and leaders who provide good resources that, as much as we can tell from afar, live with that sort of character. And that's good for us to, good for us to value and appreciate and learn from. Because that's the kind of people we want to be. All of us. We want to be men and women and boys and girls, all with a Christ-like character. And so those are the kind of leaders we want to learn from and we want to follow. And so be careful who you listen to. Don't be blinded by success. But examine character. And ultimately, we need to remember that you know, we can talk about the voices we listen to, but there is only one that we follow. And his name is Jesus. And he's a perfect character. He is of perfect integrity. And so he's the one that we follow. We can learn from others, but he is our king. And so let's not let anybody else cloud who our eyes are fixed on. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that you work, you work through us. You work through all of us, your people, as we strive to follow after you. But God, while it's, while it's a gift that we can learn from one another, we also want to be careful not to be misguided. And so we pray that you would help us not to let anybody get in the way of you. God, we're grateful for the men and women that you put into our lives who are examples to us that teach us, that we learn from, whose lessons shape us and help us understand how to follow you. But God, we do want to be wise. We want to be careful. And so we pray for your, your guidance 
but also we pray that you would help us to, to fix our eyes on you. And that nobody, nobody would keep us from following you alone. So show us how to be faithful in that way. Show us how to fix our eyes on you alone. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, as we close, Lee is going to lead us in singing. And we just want to declare again that our eyes are fixed on Jesus. God works through us. God has brought good leaders and teachers in various parts of our lives, but Jesus alone is who we follow. And we want to declare that again this morning. And so as Lee comes to lead us in song, let's join together in fixing our eyes on Jesus. Lost our saved, find their way at the sound of your great name, all condemned. sound of your church family, we, we always want to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus alone. And so, let me just encourage us. It's okay to learn from others, but let's be clear on who we follow. And let's be careful who we listen to. Thank you for being here. Maybe not the passage you would pick on Daylight Savings Sunday, but uh, I appreciate uh, just a chance for us to gather and worship together. Um, if you have questions about becoming a Christian or joining our church, we'd love to help you talk through those. You can just mark on your Connect card, I'd like to become a Christian or I'd like to join the church and place that in the offering boxes as you go out and we'll follow up with you this week and would love to just talk with you or if you have something you'd like to pray about, if there's just something that's on your heart, I'm going to be here at the front with some of our deacons at the end of the service, come by and, and just say, this is something I'd, I'd like you to join with me in praying about, and we'd love to do that. A few things that I, I want to highlight for us. Uh, we've got several things coming up this week. Tuesday, of course, is our one-day VBS, and uh, it's still you can still come. It's not too late if you haven't registered, but if you can register, register between now and then, that'll help us. 
But that's going to be Tuesday from 6 to 8.30 for uh, kids that are grades 1 to 6. And it's going to be a really good time for them to walk through and, and uh, learn about how God worked in the life of his people uh, back in the days of Exodus. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Then uh, with spring break this week, there's no Wednesday activities. You'll see that uh, on the back of your worship guide. And uh, no Wednesday night meal or other things going on. Um, in two weeks, though, right after the servants on March 27th, uh, in here we're going to have an information and interest meeting for preteen camp. That's for kids that are grades 3 through 6. And so March 27th, right after the service, we'll meet in here and just give you a little bit of information. And uh, don't forget that we're approaching Easter, and so we need our uh, Easter eggs and individually wrapped candy for our Easter egg hunt. Uh, that's going to be on Easter Sunday morning. This year we're moving it to Easter Sunday morning during our life group time. We want to make Easter Sunday the big day for all of our families to come and for us to invite people to be a part of the Easter celebration together. Now, uh, we have uh, some new members also to introduce this morning. And so if you'll direct your attention to your screen, uh, this is Bob and Carol Adams. Many of you know Bob and Carol and are so grateful that God's brought them to our church family, and so if you would welcome this, them this morning, go ahead. And uh, we are so grateful. I had a great time visiting with them this past week, and glad God has brought you all to our church family. Well, Lee, I'm going to turn it over to you now. All right. Thank you. Thank you for being here this morning. Let's stand together as we sing the chorus of Living Hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Have a great day.